I've got two guests today, uh, different subjects, so we'll be looking at two uh, issues. So let's start off with uh, a look at um, the federal government's um, CNG plan. In case you're wondering, uh, CNG compressed national gas. Well, the first of my two guests is Mr. Mike Oshatui. And Mr. Mike Oshatui is uh, the National Operations Controller of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN. And so the first question I put to him was that, ah, okay, you say petroleum marketers. Um, I, I kept the fact that I know that um, CNG, they all come from uh, this kind of a source. But I said, okay, you are IPMAN, petroleum marketers. Why are you talking to us about gas? Uh, well, we are licensed to, <laughs> to market. <laughs> You're licensed to yeah, market both. Petroleum. Petroleum and gas. Yes. And so, all, all and, of them are coming from the same source, right? They're byproduct. They're byproduct. Yeah. Well, you know, when you produce, in the course of producing the petrol, you know, we the, have CNG, we have PG. We have, we have too many byproducts. Yes. That come out of yes. the, the process of production. Mm -hmm. So we are licensed by mainstream downstream. So if you know, I mean, to, to, to distribute and market uh, all the products. If you see that, I mean, some stations, when you buy your gas, your petrol, you then open your boot and buy your gas. Well, you have uh, gas uh, skid. Yes. Station. Now, of course, we're talking about gas now um, because of the high price of petroleum following the removal of subsidy on that particular product. And so a lot of people have begun privately to experiment with this whole question of um, an alternative fuel for their cars, for their generators, but let's stay with cars for the moment um, because that it was in that connection that the um, uh, the NMPC uh, NMPCL, you know, announced on Thursday that it is partnering now um, with um, Nipco Nipco Gas Limited to develop CNG compressed national gas stations in the country, um, and they delineated it like that because um, apart from compressed national gas, we also have liquefied. Uh, petroleum gas, you know, LPG. Yeah. That's what uh, madams and uh, caterers up and down the land know as cooking gas. Yes. Yes. Okay. But we're talking about CNG, CNG. now. Um, CNG is different from, uh, you know, it's, it's a different, it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's another conversation uh, between the two. Which is better? Or what are the differences between the two? I don't think we really have um, all of that time for you to go into that. But the thing is, it's gas. It's, 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 it's gaseous. And um, unlike where the LPG that I spoke about just now, which is liquefied natural gas, I think people who have those newfangled uh, generate, I mean, uh, 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 cylinders uh, that you can actually see the volume, they actually can see, you know, uh, the volume of their cylinder. And if you shake it a bit, you can see that, oh, I got half of a, half of a tank full. Um, so that's for LPG. But with CNG that is being promoted now, we're going to need, what, specialized uh, dispensing stations? Because people need to know where to go to fill up on this gas. So let's talk about that. Um, we don't have very many of those stations now. What is the plan? What is the federal government's plan in terms of numbers and spread across the country for people who will be converting to CNG? Yeah, you have asked so many questions. Uh, take, it, take, it take, any, take it, take it anywhere you I'll want. I'll take it from any angle. Mm. Um, compressed natural gas, compressed natural gas, CNG, is for vehicles. And uh, it's been used over the world so many years ago. But uh, because of uh, our, our um, what do I call it? Our nonchalant attitude in Nigeria that made us to be, to be, to be starting now, uh, that is that. But we can, uh, we do have stations. We have vehicles can go on and. Uh, we have a few of them. Uh -huh. We are very limited. We only have in Benin. We have much in Benin. The only one I know we have in Lagos is the one in front of MFM there. That's owned by Nipco. And uh, 
And I've been doing that I'm partnering with Nimco now. Nimco has been in, in this business for about 14 years on this CNG. Because CNG is cheaper. Right? Than, than fuel. That, that, I mean, that's fossil fuel. It's cheaper. Right? And uh, you get CNG from maintain and while uh, LPG is from propane. And CNG is lighter than LPG. And if you are using CNG, it, it runs, uh, it's, more, it's more cheaper. One kg of CNG can take you to about 25 to 30 kilometers. That's it. So, and uh, and uh, well, you see, the, the, one of the more useful ways in which these things are compared is um, um, uh, one liter of fuel, for instance. People have an idea because cars have forever been delineated, or we've been describing them, their cars as 40 miles to the gallon. You know, or you know, or forty. So, uh, what, what uh, can you put that into miles to per liter, or it doesn't work like that? No, I mean, we, we talk of kg when it comes to gas. Uh, well, that's kilo. Right, yes, about, about in the five to uh, thirty kilometer will take you one kg, and uh, you know, it's it's fermenter friendly. Right? Okay, it's because it what, contains what, 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 less sulfur and lead. Okay, right? I mean the the the. Mm. the the exhaust, I mean, what comes from the exhaust is, mm -hmm. is, more, is not very light, right? So, but on, like petrol, which we see the flames and whatever. So, and the engine will last longer if you are using CNG, right? And we don't need to go to any importation for, for CNG or even LPG. So we have them in abundance in Nigeria. The gas we have in this country can take us 400 years. So we have it in abundance here. But, but they're going back to the question of, What's the plan of the government in terms of making people to access these CNG in our stations? Yeah, if, if man has done said that, okay, we have the stations throughout the whole country, cities, hundreds, villages, where we can deploy the skid, right? It's just like your, your, your FPG for cylinder, right? We can, we can drive in to any station and buy your gas. And so also, we are ready now. To also uh, put the skid in our stations because we have we have limited one in Nigeria, but the cost is also there. So government has to come in in terms of giving maybe soft loan to the to the stations for I mean for the because we have we have three years. One, the first is the, the are the stations equipped with the dispensing skid? No. Are the vehicles converted already? Uh, for CNG, no. Then where are the conversion centers in the country? These these three things has to be put in place before we can we can talk of CNG. But we have to start from somewhere. So we need to establish an infrastructure. Yes. Uh, for this, but and but, that... but but to make it easier, the stations are already there. I mean, the stations, both the Ipman stations, Moman stations, Dapman stations, they are already on ground. What what, what stations? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, filling stations. Uh, the filling stations they, they are already, already there. there. So it's not to deploy well, the equipment okay. and the tanks to the stations. Okay. And that is the area government has to come in. But it's not something you are going to do in one month or two months. Mm. But, but you have to start from somewhere. Like Dr. Francis Debo. Debo said that it man are ready to accommodate the, uh, the, the skin and the stations, right? Or for, I mean, if you don't need to be building special station for CNG. Right, it's all over. So, although, has to come in. Yes. Uh, although the NMPC uh, has announced that it will be, you know, er er building, erecting thirty-five specialized CNG uh, uh, stations. Are you not saying that uh, one 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 station per per state doesn't make sense? But it's the beginning. Yeah, you you I, said I, it. I'm, it's I'm, the beginning. If you put one one station in the, in the whole state, can it suffer? No, that is in addition to what you are talking okay. about. Okay, if it's addition. In but addition. That, but I mean, but that, but that, that is their own plan. That's their own plan. Yes. But I mean, but that in collaboration with Ipman stations and, okay. and, and, and Moman stations. Okay. They can't do it alone. No, no. But no. They, I mean, because they don't have the social, I mean, social enough. They, no, they have the station too, nationwide. Yes. But the one day. These, these are stations that are going to be constructed those, because those, as the MD. Those stations they are talking about is the one they have, they have already got. You know, they have one station past it. Uh, right, uh, I, uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, they, then they have some affiliates, okay, right, yes. in which they have little or no control if 
I mean, they don't agree well. So, but the, the most important thing is for them, or for the government now, to use human infrastructures and normal infrastructures like total, like. Uh, of course, Mumbai, whatever. which we already, uh, which we are already uh, using we are, we are for used LTG. To, uh, thank you. We are already yes. using for LTG. You know, you can just but, now. Now you can drive into any station and buy your LPG. Yes. Well, no, 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 not any station, not any station, not any station. No, they don't have half the uh, yeah. facility. Yes. But as this, out of in fact, if you want to go from your house to go and buy, you don't need to go far, right? To buy gas, right? So also, if uh, if my stations are deployed. For this operation, it will be very easier. Because you know that we are in the hamlets, we're in the villages. We're everywhere. Okay, you know, that's right. You know, okay. Because, you know, I, I hear you, sir. But um, in the same way as we have some specialized stations, even now, NMPC special stations, they are different from all the other ones, you know, even though they do the same thing. I think the cause of that, the MD was announcing that there's a strategic part partnership between NMPC and NIPCO, uh, for 35 state-of-the-art, you know, uh, special ones. But let me go on a break. We'll come back. Okay. And, uh, so we were talking about the NMPC NIPCO. Uh, NIPCO is a gas organization. It's been in existence for about 14 years now. And NMPC, we all, we all know, NMPC-L. Uh, they are going into a strategic partnership. And we're talking about the, with the gas that they shall be producing, CNG, as an alternative to petroleum. Uh, the super petrol that we use right now. And uh, Benga in Abuja is waiting to join the conversation. Good morning to you, Benga in Abuja. Good morning, Mr. Ayori. Good morning to your guests. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, NMPC and NIPCO coming together to establish uh, CNG stations and the rest. It's a welcome development to create jobs, it's to create an alternative sort of energy, which will do the the hardship or the side effects of this uh, subsidy removal, and also all the value chain that company with it. But my own, that why are they coming at this time? NMPC has been a sole importer of petrol for the past two or three years, and they know that the government, the past government, have already said that even that at January they want to remove subsidy. So because of the impact they can have on the election, they now shift it to, 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 to June. And then this organization, I, I think that they should have no separation, establishing all these gas stations all over Nigeria. So that by this time, it will just a seamless transition from petrol to CNG. And that by, by this time now, people will be being engaged and being employed. In fact, the pressure will have been left on the government about the hardship, about the people are getting employed, creating jobs. But the president the government that yes, the government was upright and forward looking. So I'm thinking that it does it mean that they were not really looking at the direction before? An investor in the energy industry, I think this should have been done earlier. Also, private sector also, and I've not seen enough synergy or I mean people that are investing in this area. Because I mean, look, our, our youth are roaming the streets. We have no job. And many people have money stuck in the bank, billions of naira, both in the Nigeria and abroad. And this is a low hanging of making money and creating jobs. When the situation like this, it's on a providing solution, it's a way of making more money and also taking away unemployment from our society. So I'm seeing I'm seeing that to rationalize. Why we have not seen many private sectors, even other uh, like uh, other high companies. We have been going into this before this time. Okay. The question I want our guests to answer, mm. it really surprised me that this is a low-hanging food of generating money for government, generating money for society, that you look at if we, are, we, are, we can't even have a university of the point. You know, I'm looking at this. And it's, and, and, and it's and very pathetic. Thank you very much. All right, then. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, the answer is very straightforward. It's because of the interest in subsidy regime. Right? Some people are making money on the subsidy regime. So, so uh, they don't, they don't, um, they, you know, no. in fact, for the past three years, government had wanted to do this CNG gas expansion program. But I don't know what happened. I was, I was part of the system. But I don't know what happened. That, this, the, I mean, the system just slowed down. Uh, but because the new government has come now and emphasized that, yes, I want gas to come into operation. Everything is made on leadership. 
if I mean, I mean if, if the president has not insisted that okay, we are welcome gas. They, I mean, they won't do it for the next ten years. But because there's no trash again on subsidy, right? So and everybody now see that when the option now is gas, is gas. So I unless, can, I unless mean, you can afford petrol. Sorry? Unless you can afford petrol. Uh, well, yeah, unless you can afford petrol, so, but it's not very hard. Yeah, because all those stations that are already, we have a massive infrastructure for liquid fuel. Yeah, we have so, it. Those ones will not shut down. Yes, but I can, they will just, I, 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 I can, I can sympathize with my, that uh, man that Benga that said, called in for why the NPC with AT now? Yes. Because of interest. Because of interest. vested interest. Vested interest, that's okay. the truth. Okay. okay. Because okay. If, if they are not top, the subsidy, right, they will still continue. I mean, nothing will be done. And, I mean, Nipko, as he has, they have seen the future. They have invested on this thing for about 14 years. In fact, 40% of vehicles in, in, in Benin, they are, they are on CNG. That's right. Uh, well, well uh, uh, transport vehicles. Yes, yeah, suburban vehicles. Mm. And even, I can tell you, so many vehicles that are going to Idonia or whatever, they fill up and in the same Nipko CNG station in, uh, in, by, in, uh, in front of uh, uh, that church there. And when they're coming back again, they refill. Right? And everybody now wants to convert to gas, to CNG, because it's crazy. I mean, I mean to afford that kind of uh, money. But at the same time, if the government has not insisted that the move subsidy, we're not going to look in for the option. OK. Uh, let, let, let's take uh, Babs in Italy. Good morning, Babs. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, before now, I want to say before now, where is NMPC? Like the last caller just uh, analyzed. NMPC would have, you know, gone into this before now so that it will reduce the pressure on the government. I read sometimes last, uh, last year that uh, NMPC acquired some land in KD State to start going cassava. I mean, to start, I mean, deriving um, ethanol from cassava. You can derive ethanol from cassava and sugar cane. NMPC as a major player in this industry would have, you know, I mean, building some alternative before now to reduce the pressure on the government. And I expect the government also, if in some other end, to be able to say, okay, bring in investors in this aspect. Because the pressure is too, is too much on the government in terms of the um, uh, government want to do everything. In the capitalist world, when we talk about capitalism, we talk about the men, people who have money in their bank, cash in the bank, mm -hmm. who are bringing people, not only just the government doing this thing. Where are the, our, our rich men? Bring them into this whole process so that everybody will be part of the solution. Indeed. That's just my contribution. Uh, but just before you go, Babs, Babs, uh, in Italy there, yes. um, uh, how, uh, how widespread is CNG use? Do you know? Well, in Italy here, it's mixed. But there are some cars that are using CNG already. Oh, okay. So it, it, it has been a transition. And in the, for example, if you look at Brazil, 30% of what they use in Brazil is ethanol. They are the largest producer of um, um, ethanol, traveling, most of their cars is ethanol, 30%. They lift it to the, with, with, the, with the PMS itself. Okay. And okay. you get my point. So if countries have been doing all of these alternative fuel and all of that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. The major players in the industries are not doing anything up till now when we are saying we wanted to change and everybody wants the miracle to happen just overnight and the government is just under pressure with getting yeah. things done. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for calling in, Babs. Appreciate you. Um, as I was saying, this NMPC NIPCO uh, arrangement, they said 35 uh, state of the arts uh, stations are going to be constructed in the first instance. Very, I think very much in the in the uh, in the like of um, uh, maybe like demonstration stations about the best, what you know, cutting edge. I mean, that's what state of the art is. So that's separate from, as you were saying. Uh, what everybody else will be doing. Um, uh, and, and I think you were indicating that, look, just like the stations where they have that facility, you can buy your LPG gas right now. You can also buy your car fuel. Yes. Uh, so it might well be, uh, if that is what you are saying, that as you can buy LPG, there's also a section for CNG in the same station. Yes. You can see that. Yeah. And then even petrol, in, petrol yes. in the same station. And you were talking about some um, uh, vehicles, uh, especially commercial vehicles in Edo, in Edo State. Is that, did you say no, like 40%? Really. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, 30 percent in, in, in 30, Benin. 30, 40 yeah. percent in Benin. Benin yeah. Yes. They have been on it for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. They have been using it for over 10 years. Well, the MD of uh, NMPCL had said that um, uh, the stations would service over 200,000 vehicles daily when they are all fully uh, operational. So that gives you an idea of the scope. So it's clear that we shall continue to be using uh, the expensive fuel. In fact, what I'm hearing is that uh, you, you, the driver, the owner, the driver of the vehicle can switch between fuel sources. Yeah, let me, let me say something to you again. Uh, in, from Ipman's side, it must have a secure facility with uh, AFDB to finance uh, CNG in all, in all Ipman stations for people uh, that are interested. The dispensing. Yeah. yeah. Finance yeah. the dispensing. To buy. You have to buy the equipment and deploy okay. at our station. That is the Ipman effort. Mm -hmm. We have even started it before the uh, subsidy mover, right? Then coming to, to NMPC, NMPC, well, they have no choice than to grab NIPCO. Because NIPCO is the one that is available now. That has, has been the business, that have the, I mean, the experience, that also know the road. So it's a good start for an NPC. I think they are starting from somewhere. Yes, yeah, they're starting but from somewhere. But it's supposed to have been doing this one way uh, past way here. Back, yeah. Well, uh, but this, we, better because, because the president have said, yes. go and use gas. There you go. That's, the, that's leadership. Yes. So uh, it's, uh, well, I hear what you're saying. I think that this, we are, we, better, like we are saying from somewhere. Better late from then. Yes. You know. But if, if something has not been removed, this change will not start. That's right. It's true. That's right. You, since you said it's because when uh, Benga and Abuja, Abuja asked the question, you said it's because of vested interest. But yes. now that there, that interest, no, no interest. Be, there's no more no interest. interest. So, you know. um, so yeah, even with, with that, we are consumers too. We have to look for other ways to also switch over. That's and right. And you know, when you say CNG and petrol, if you are, I mean, if you are, if you are traveling, if you see that you say, your I mean, your gauge has gone down on saying you just press the button. That's right. You switch to petrol. Mm -hmm. Depending where you are going to buy to refill. It sounds And when you refill it back, then you switch again to that. You switch again to that gas. You're going to incur about half of the price. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, about half of the price. So all of this is pretty exciting. Um, but um, let me just uh, slip in the fact that um, uh, this is not the NMPC uh, announcement. Um, we're looking at, what, 2024? Something like the first quarter of 2024 is where they are projecting uh, this one to. So 21 of those CNG stations would have been available. But as you know, as you've already said, there are still some places where you can still get it now uh, without NMPC being involved because people have uh, sort of invested in it. But by the time they come in and many more people will get involved, then I suppose it's going to be almost as easy in the beginning as buying fuel. It's just a matter of- The only place I know that CNG will be in Lagos is Ibafo, owned by Nipco. That's I mean, I don't know other place. Okay. But I mean, we need to wait, wait to 2024 to get this CNG when we have Ipman station all over. It's to buy this kit. I mean, to buy, I mean, the kits are in deploy. The kits. Yes, and the, I mean, then the tanks. And then you I also mean, have to get, you, I mean, it's Well, one has to be very, very careful because this is a new technology and it has to be done properly and professionally. Um, as you know, there is no it's shortage. Not, it's not rocket science. It's there, not rocket it science. isn't rocket science, but so there is no shortage of vehicles that are exploding in videos from abroad. Let me, let me tell you abroad. There's no, any operation that doesn't have its own risk. That's what I'm That's saying. That's why safety is important. Mm -hmm. Once mm -hmm. we, are, we are able to get by the safety, yes. then we are good to go. Indeed. But we, government has to, you know, you see, they did something in, 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 in Bangladesh and Indonesia. Government came in and into the financing of this kid. Because for, I'm not anymore on the street now, to convert vehicles now, about 300,000 to 400,000. A vehicle. So in which they can't afford, but I mean but government can 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 can, can convert it freely for Nigerians mm -hmm. and then put some a little bit of the cost of conversion on the cost of the SNG. Like if they are if they are buying CNG for 20 naira, they can sell it for 220. The 20 naira on top is the cost of the conversion. Oh, okay. Right. If, that is if government were to come yes, in. Yes. Then they'd they be crazy. So each time you are refilling, you are paying for the conversion costs. That's right. So that's what we don't make people to feel the impact. But for, for but, but when people now to go and put down for a thousand to convert, 
very cool. Yes, they know it's not easy. They say it costs anywhere from what? Three and a half to five thousand. Three, four, five thousand. Depending on the on the on, on the vehicle, on the vehicle, how big is the vehicle? Is. So that area also is very key. Mm. I'm coming out to keep coming. So as they are paying for the uh, CNG, they are also paying for the conversion costs, which which they will not feel at all. All right. They won't feel. So that, this is an idea that this, you are very fundamental. It, it was done in the. In, I mean, it has been done in abroad okay. in Bangladesh, okay. Indonesia. So I'm coming out to because that that one also is very key. Right. If, even if you have the CNG station, you have the CNG in the station, what of the conversion costs? Okay, that's also important. So thank you very much for pointing all of these things out, Mr. Osachi, uh, Mike Osachi, uh, National Operations Controller of uh, the Independent uh, Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria. Um, thank you. You know, so it's like, um, are you already driving one of those kind of cars? I'm I'm converting my own next, next week. Okay. And I, and even I'm in fact I'm already using uh, LPG in my stations. There you go. I've converted my generator to gas because of the cost. There you go. Indeed. So thank you very much thank for coming you. along to talk to us about this. Appreciate you. Okay. Thank you very much for staying with us. And now my other guest is Mr. Hamza Baba. He is the Deputy Coordinator of Special Duties uh, for the Tinumbu uh, Shetima Independent Campaign Council. And uh, he is also a former Special uh, Assistant, Humanitarian Affairs, to the Speaker of the Ninth House of uh, Representatives. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning, uh, Mr. Baba. It, it, that's an interesting combination, you know, I Mr. Ambaba. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, now, um, the ministerial nominations. Uh, let, you know, uh, we, the, the second list of Mr. President has arrived in the National Assembly, did so about two days ago. So, um, uh, so give me your impressions because um, it is said, people are saying that we need to reduce, uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing to reduce the size of governance, but right now, um, President Tinumbu has entered the record books as the uh, man with the largest cabinet uh, since the return to democracy. Uh, by the, I think it was 19 others that were added. Uh, first of all, give me, give me your thoughts generally on uh, the nominees that have been sent to the National Assembly. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Yori. Uh, we have to uh, start with... Uh appreciation uh, appreciating the uh, mr president uh, for recognizing talent and uh, giving youth uh, a chance uh, in this uh, in this cabinet and also uh, i want to convey the gratitude of all the nominees especially the young people the young women out there who have made the list i think uh, uh, we are moving. Nigeria, you know, is a journey. We're in a, uh, in a journey, and uh, we can't say we are there, but we're moving there. Uh, at least now we have about 20% of the nominees are women. Uh, this is uh, it's a scorecard. It's something to talk about. Uh, we have about nine or ten women uh, in the, uh, as nominees uh, for minister, ministerial positions. Uh, is quite uh, below the affirmative action. I know the affirmative action is uh, about 35%. We are about 20%, and we're still moving. I believe before the end of this administration, maybe we'll have more ministers, women, and uh, I think it will be unprecedented in the, in the history of Nigeria. Mm. So generally, I would say I'm impressed with the nominees. There are uh, apart from the young people, they are also technocrats. It's a, it's a kind of blend uh, between politicians and technocrats. And you believe with me, there are many technocrats in this uh, nominees. We have about eight or nine medical doctors, consultants. And we, we also have, have about other, five uh, ex-governors. Uh, we also have about five ex-governors. Uh, five ex-governors. Yes. In as much as we need the experience, uh, we need the technocrats, we also need the experience and the mentorship of the governors. So I would say it's a balanced cabinet, and uh, there are a lot of hopes, there are a lot of expectations from Nigerians, from party faithfuls, for these people to deliver. Indeed. Uh, you know that we have our, we have our 
renewed hope agenda. And in this renewed hope agenda, we have uh, all the manifestos, the vision, the mission of this government. And uh, I'm happy our president started, he started you know, on a good, very good note, the momentum. So all we need to is to put hopes, our hopes uh, on this nominees because this renewed hope uh, will be carried. The, it, it, they are just like vehicles. These ministers, they are just like vehicles to realize and actualize the dreams of our Swaji Bola Ahmed uh, Tinibu contained in the renewed hope uh, agenda. Okay, thank you very much for staying with us. And now my other guest is Mr. Hamza Baba. He is the Deputy Coordinator of Special Duties uh, for the Tinumbu uh, Shetima Independent Campaign Council. And uh, he is also a former Special uh, Assistant, Humanitarian Affairs to the Speaker of the Ninth House of uh, Representatives. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning, uh, Mr. Baba. It, it, that's an interesting combination, you know, yeah, Mr. Thank Ambaba. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, now, um, the ministerial nominations. Uh, let, you know, uh, we, the, the second list of Mr. President has arrived in the National Assembly, did so about two days ago. So, um, uh, so give me your impressions because um, it is said, people are saying that we need to reduce uh, it wouldn't be a bad thing to reduce the size of governance. But right now, um, President Tinumbu has entered the record books as the uh, man with the largest cabinet uh, since the return to democracy. Uh, by the, I think it was 19 others that were added. Uh, first of all, give me, give me your thoughts generally on uh, the nominees that have been sent to the National Assembly. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Yori. Uh, we have to uh, start with uh, appreciation, uh, appreciating the uh, Mr. President uh, for recognizing talent and uh, giving youth uh, a chance uh, in, this, uh, in this cabinet. And also, uh, I want to convey the gratitude of all the nominees, especially the young people, the young women out there who have made the list. I think uh, uh, we are moving. Nigeria, you know, is a journey. We're in a, uh, in a journey, and uh, we can't say we are there, but we're moving there. Uh, at least now we have about 20% of the nominees are women. Uh, this is uh, it's a scorecard. It's something to talk about. Uh, we have about nine or ten women uh, in the, uh, as nominees uh, for minister, ministerial positions. Uh, is quite uh, below the affirmative action. I know the affirmative action is uh, about 35%. We are about 20%, and we're still moving. I believe before the end of this administration, maybe we'll have more ministers, women, and uh, I think it will be unprecedented in the, in the history of Nigeria. Mm. But generally, I would say mm. I'm impressed with the nominees. You know, there are... Uh, apart from the young people, they are also technocrats. It's a, it's a kind of blend uh, between politicians and technocrats. And you believe with me, there are many technocrats in this nominees. Uh, we have about eight or nine medical doctors, consultants. And we, we also have, have about other, five uh, ex-governors. Uh, we also have about five ex-governors. Uh, five ex-governors. Yes. In as much as we need the experience, uh, we need the technocrats, we also need the experience and the mentorship of the governors. So I would say it's a balanced cabinet, and uh, there are a lot of hopes, there are a lot of expectations from Nigerians, from party faithfuls, for these people to deliver. Uh, you know that we have, our, we have our renewed hope agenda, and in this renewed hope agenda, we have uh, all the manifestos, the vision, the mission of this government. And uh, I'm happy our president started, he started you know, on a good, very good note, the momentum. So all we need to is to put hopes, our hopes uh, on these nominees because this renewed hope uh, will be carried. The, it, it, they are just like vehicles. These ministers, they are just like vehicles to 
we realize and actualize the dreams of our Swaji Bola Ahmed uh, Tinibu contained in the Renewed Hope uh, agenda. So I, I can say I'm, I'm full of hopes. You see, you see nominees like uh, uh, Hajia Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, uh, you, you see Dr. Beta Edu, you see even the recent one, the more recent one, Mariam, Mariam Ibrahim Shetty. We, we, we can see a lot of young, vibrant, energetic women and, 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 and men who are ready to serve. So we want to see more of these appointments, and we want to see this cascade to the state level. Maybe the state governors will also uh, borrow a leaf from uh, Aswajibola Ahmadinejad. Will also give young people, give young women a chance, uh, employ more technocrats in this government, because there are a lot of expectations out there. The economy is not in good shape. We have problem with the security. We have issues. There are so many issues. You know, the fuel price hike. You know, the global recession. Uh, you know, due to uh, Ukraine, the Russia war. There are so many issues globally which uh, is affecting Nigeria. Recently, even look at the uh, the coup happening in some of the uh, West African Sahel countries. So all this, uh, you know, uh, should be a source of concerns to the nominees. Apart uh, after all the paraphernalia, after all the uh, the celebrations, they should get to work. Uh, we don't have time, and uh, we want uh, nothing less than, you know, uh, we're expecting nothing less than success in this administration because there are a lot of expectations, and there are a lot mm. of st uh, stake. We have a lot of stake in this administration. Okay. Um, so, total of 47 ministers so far. Well, uh, there, I don't think any more are coming. But so far, 47 ministers. Can you hear? Are you able to hear me? I can barely hear you. Okay. Um, well, they just heard that you can't hear me, so I'm sure the technical people are on it. Uh, um, okay. We'll, let me, you, you said you couldn't hear me, which is a problem, um, because you must be able to hear me. So um, I... I let, let, I'm audible now. Okay, excellent. Let me use that opportunity to take, uh, I think uh, Mr. Ibrahim, if I got that right, has called in from, uh, is it Kaduna? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, calling, I'm calling from Kaduna. Good morning, sir, Mr. Ayori. I'm uh, good, 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 morning, good morning, sir, and thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank Go you so much. This is Ibrahim, yeah. You see, I think that uh, this very topic this morning is quite elaborated and improved. It's big volume for what we are hearing from both of you. I'm talking to you and your girls. Now, what we really want Nigeria to go into it is let us go into this building to make it available and affordable. Because why? The way our manner things are going today now, ordinary kerosene cannot be buy for the household common man. This is what the, this is what we know. Um, Mr. Ibrahim. Mr. Ibrahim. Now, yes, I, Mr. Mr. Ibrahim. We have left that subject matter of CNG, compressed natural gas, oh, as an alternative okay, fuel. Yes. Let, 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 me, let me just brush on this, then go to this study where you're talking about the ministers. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, about the ministers. And we have 47 now. 28 first time, 19 to follow. Making a total of 47. Yes, yes. No, number of ministers does not matter. Because what matters or what let everything work. Let all of them be working. And let the state, when those people come from, also working. Now, you see, my own problem most here is this. What about when I say Minister of Agriculture? What the Minister of what the Minister of Agriculture is doing in Abuja, for God's sake? I believe that Minister of Agriculture, let every state, let all the government have what they call the representative of the Ministry of the of the Ministry of Agriculture. If the Minister of Agriculture is in every state and well overseen by the federal by the federal state, I believe that will go a long way that we will know what we are there, we know what we are doing. Not a city minister sits in his office school and they say that you are a minister of agriculture. What do you mean by agriculture? Agriculture at the name and I have at, at the name arise is what? Not any land that has no land for agriculture. No. Uh, is it market as well? Now, Minister of Commerce and Industry, when they say again, I also like to see this two fish that become to them would have been a, 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 a grassroots people. Sit with these people in the grassroots and know what to do. 
Can't that uh, problem to them and know what to do about it? Now, well, well, the minister, the, the minister we have today was the civil ministry. Well, to me, really, I don't have to problem there, but politicians, they just want to compensate their political <laughs> allies. But there is nothing about it. But we are trying by this time, because they want to cut costs. But is it a way of cutting costs? Like what we had yet, uh, this morning about uh, yesterday, that uh, the one governor from the North East has I only appoint for uh, appoint, well, a number of 40 media advisors for what sake. Now, look at all. We are, like, are, we, are we cutting costs? Why are we, why, what is this? But I believe that the way and manner the government is going, they are going to make it well. But I would like to hand in with this CNG. Issue, the uh, because uh, even in this one, sir, you contradicted yourself a bit. You said, first of all, that, no, the number doesn't matter. But then you ended up with, um, so what are we doing with 47? Yeah. The number doesn't matter. What I said is this. Minister of Agriculture, let them go back to the, to the community, to, at least to the grassroots. All right. Ah, those that were only saying in Abuja as well, we know those ones. Like, Minister <laughs> of Commerce, what are they doing there? Minister of uh, Water Resources. <laughs> it's also something that wants to go to the community, to the, to, uh, to, come to our communities, to the grass where they come from. Okay. And it says we need to look into those to diversify our economy in a fullest way so that we have a do I move forward. And yes. Don't forget about the fire that the Mr. President is commissioning in Governor today, please. We should also look into this. Let, let everything available and affordable so that the masses will enjoy it. If, Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> now, Mr. Baba, <laughs> um, you, you heard it all. Um, he, he, he was giving his own rundown, his own uh, impressions uh, about the matter. Um, the people that are in there, you spoke highly of the kind of diversive, it was a diversified mix of people. And so since Mr. President has um, been very emphatic about putting in competent people, uh, I, I imagine that you are... Uh, you, you are sort of sure that um, whatever the ministry that is given to anybody, they will indeed, um, as uh, Wike said, paraphrasing him, uh, the president will not regret appointing them. Mr. you see, uh, we need to understand something. Our constitution says uh, we, must have, we must have one minister for each state. And, uh, you know, that must be a consideration. That is number one. Secondly, you see the enormity of the problems uh, of this country. We have so many challenges. So we have more hands. I don't think the 47 are too many. Okay. Looking at the it's a record, though. They might not the be too many. They might not be too many, but it's a record. It's a record. Yes, because of the volume of problems we have. We have so many issues. And uh, if you look at the... Uh, might not be private to... Uh, he, he must not. Uh, he must uh, have not read the reforms of the civil service that is coming. Uh, we're going to have a lot of mergers and a lot of new ministries, and uh, we need more people that will actually man as those ministries. We have so many okay. problems. I agree with him that we need to decentralize. I agree with him. Governors should be decentralized. We have uh, government at the local government level. We have at the state levels. We have at the federal level. And all these, uh, there are key responsibilities which are already enshrined in the constitutions. So now, uh, if you look at the, this uh, renewed hub agenda, uh, President Bola Ahmatinibu uh, mentioned that he wants to identify minerals resources in each local government. In fact, I think it's in each ward, at least, if there's uh, minerals resources, we we'll, uh, we'll recognize, we we'll identify those uh, resources and then we we'll actually mobilize uh, people so that we can get jobs, we can get people who can actually uh, move people into production. So we we'll see a lot of changes. It's not as uh, business as usual. You know, that's why I say there are a lot of expectations and we need to study the renewed hub agenda. And this renewed hub agenda, we need people. The vehicles are the ministers. These are the people. The ministers, yeah. the MDS, ministries, department, agencies, and what have you, they are the ones to mm. carry the mission and mission content in this renewal hub agenda and, 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 and make it a reality. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, me, I'm satisfied. Of course, there are some, you know, dissatisfaction here and there, but uh, we must give uh, this government benefit of doubt. The people that have been nominated to be uh, ministers, they are competent people, they are quality people, Look at uh, Tunji Alausa, 
uh, you know, is a satisf uh, certified nephrologist. Look at uh, uh, Boson Tijani. He's a co-founder of CC, uh, CC Hub. He's a leading Pan-African Innovative and Technology Center. We have so many people, quality people. Uh, Tanko Sununu is the former chairman of uh, you know, health in the House of Representatives. Bumitun Jojo, a very young, vibrant uh, you know, engineer. We have so many people. So all this should so be a source of hope and inspiration to us that uh, by the grace of God, we're going to have it right. Uh, we should give this uh, government benefit of that. Of course, uh, there are sufferings. Nobody is saying there are no sufferings. Uh, you know, uh, it's a function of so many you know, economic uh, uh, recessions uh, that have not affected only Nigeria. But I know that, uh, I acknowledge that people are suffering and we need some quick uh, hanging fruits. You know, we need, uh, something must happen. Uh, that's why we have a lot of hope on these uh, appointees, on these nominees. Indeed. We have to get to work. Uh, you know, okay. after maybe this week after the inauguration, you know, uh, Nigerians are eagerly waiting and hopeful to see that they should kickstart, you know, the realization of this, our renewed hope agenda. So, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ibrahim, you should be uh, a bit patient. Uh, I believe, I agree with you that uh, there are sufferings, but I have hope, and I want you to place your hope on these young, young people and vibrant okay. people. Of course, we have some former governors. We need their experience. We need their mentorship to guide the younger ones. And I believe this uh, cabinet will be a balanced cabinet. And, uh, In talking of balance, you were, point, you were pointing out that the Constitution stipulates that there must be a minister from um, each state and uh, the federal capital territory. Um, and in addition, uh, in addition, uh, the president has also nominated a minister for each geopolitical zone, uh, as we know it. So you see, uh, in terms of balance, number one, every, one for everybody, uh, all the states, including uh, the federal capital territory, and then, you know, the each geopolitical zone also now got one. So you can't be fairer than that. Nobody can talk about marginalization, even though when you look at some of it, I, I saw some figures that one state had been shortchanged for having only five nominees. I, I don't know what that is all about. You smile as if you understand what I'm talking about. Do you get that uh, controversial aspect? Uh, you mean some, uh, uh, each state has one. We have satisfied the constitutional provision that at least each state should have a, a, a ministerial, a minister. And I think that uh, has been satisfied. And uh, we have additional one in each region. Then uh, aside from that, uh, it is a, a prerogative of the president to identify people who he wants to work with, competent people. So uh, I don't want to look at uh, that, uh, that angle. I don't, I don't want to discuss that angle. As far as I'm okay. concerned, these people, they are Nigerians, right. and they are competent, and they can deliver. I have very high hope. Uh, All right. On, on, let me bring. This, uh, people. Let, let me bring uh, another caller on. Hello. I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Let me bring another caller on. Mazi Okoroa for good morning to you, sir. Look at the, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, our yes. guest. Well, thank God today is Friday. Been uh, since John Dennis and John Saint John Dennis. At least a word is we said we don't judge people from the beginning. All these things we see, many of them started. That's just like that, but at the end of the day, they come to be a sense. That was what St. John Denis said. Now, now we are looking at the issue of the, the, the elite. Thank God for the women. The president applied as much as possible at least to bring men, women, 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 women. So this time around, our women will not complain. <laughs> at least we have technocrats that on board. Technocrats, people that are ready to do the job. But they should try as much as possible. Anybody going to the meet that is any minister must be his own line of that is his own get a, a separate qualification. It will help us. At least for now, we are sure people that are on board, at least they have said that they are going to create more ministries instead of uh, communication. At least tourism and will be on there. At least the sports. Nobody going there. We have seen what the sports sector is doing now. They are complaining. If I gave them money, the sports minister refused. Say, say, story, story, story. So we get a minister that will be monitoring all these things. Anything that belongs to the fans, anything that belongs to the sportsmen and women, we'll get to them, not the minister. If 
passing it around because it brings a very bad name. So that's why ministers of any section, of any agency, should be good and it's ready to do what? To deliver the dividends of democracy. That's what education. This is the very key post that, like Arangi said, and he said that, that what the minister told us. Okay. He was ignorant of the Ministry of Education, which we don't want anything to happen. And that's <laughs> People coming on board, they will try to go to deliver the dividends of the Transportation is the key. Because transportation, one of the things people are complaining about the subsidy remover. I even ask. Okay, Mazi, thank you very much, Mazi Okora, for calling in there. A again, uh, Mr. Baba, uh, Mazi sort of re emphasizing the need for uh, knowledgeable people, uh, adequately, appropriately qualified people. Uh, so, and I, I think you, 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 are, you are reassured in that regard that um, that indeed is what the president and his team have been working on so that everybody that went to the National Assembly could indeed fit into that mold. Uh, the other thing is that we don't know who is going to be where in terms of the ministry that they will be at. But maybe that's not too much of a big deal, if, assuming that everybody is uh, well qualified. Yeah, I believe they're all qualified and they can, uh, they can man any ministry. Of course, there are some of them that uh, because of their background, because of their pedigree. Yeah. Let me give mm -hmm. you an example. Like uh, Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, uh, she did very well in NAPTIF. The short uh, stay she did in NAPTIF, she did very well. Also, she also did excellently well. Oh, she's doing very well uh, in, the, uh, in uh, this refugee commission in providing durable solutions uh, for the problem of IDPs. She, she, uh, I, work with, I work closely with her as the special assistant humanitarian to the Speaker House of Representatives, to the ninth uh, House, of, House of Rep. And I know the volume of work we have done all over the country. So I would suggest people like, let's say, Iman Ibrahim should be given a uh, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, you know, uh, people like Beta Edu, she did excellently well as the chair, chairperson of the Commissioner's Forum when she was a commissioner in uh, uh, Cross River State. I know during the COVID-19, she did very well. And uh, okay. she's a medical doctor. She's young. She's vibrant. If she's taken to the Ministry of uh, Health, it wouldn't be uh, a bad idea. You know, Marian Shatima, the recent nominee you know, from Kano, she's very vibrant. She's good in social mobilization. She has been identifying with youth uh, and uh, development, sports, and what have you. So I would suggest that she should be given Minister of Youth and Sport because she, uh, she has done very well in that. She has, she has shown determination. Oh, I, she has shown capacity. Sure. And uh, I know her in Kano, you know, we did a lot hopefully the since 2014 during the campaign. Listening. Uh, of, uh, Hopefully the president is listening and uh, some of these suggestions will be taken on board. In the campaigns, in the mobilization, and what have you. So people like her, All right, then. she can do very well in, uh, you know, ministries like uh, Ministry of Utah uh, and uh, uh, Sport and Development. There are so many Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Mr. Baba, I beg your pardon, we're going to have to leave it there. I haven't completely uh, run out of time. Uh, but thank you very much for, you know, uh, giving us some of your time this morning to... Uh, take a look at the ministers, and um, you've, the point has been made that, look, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yes, you know, President Tinumbu is a record-breaking uh, president in that terms. No minister so far from the return to democracy has actually, you know, had 47 ministers, but he has. Uh, and, uh, but you say, uh, as you said, the number doesn't matter. The quality of work that we will be getting out of them is the most important thing. So thank you very much. Um, Hamza Baba. Deputy Coordinator, Special Duties, uh, Tinubu Shetima Independent Campaign Council. Thank you very much once again. Okay, that's our program.